All right, it's time for the first impressions. Now, before we begin, uh, excuse me, everybody. My voice is a little bit rough because I just streamed all day and I'm recording this video right now after the second day of streaming. So it's going to sound a little bit rough here and there, uh, but it should be back with the next video because I had another video planned for today, which was the additive versus multiplicative damage video. But that's now coming tomorrow as I wanted to share my initial impressions on the game as fast as I possibly could before the 15th, before everybody would pick up the game, basically. Um, so yeah, I'll start off by saying that as of right now, as of recording this video, I've got about 22 hours of playtime under the belt. Uh, I've played through the story, that took about 12 hours, and then I played around with the endgame PvE uh, and spent about 8 to 10 hours there. Now, I haven't played any Dark Zone or any PvP yet, not one minute of it, so I will not be commenting on, on PvP whatsoever. This is just the first 20 hours of the game, so to speak. What it's like, the story, the end game, and, you know, all that stuff. And of course, there will be some uh, very minor spoilers. So if you don't want to hear those, just get out now. Uh, so yeah, let's start off with the story, because that's where everybody starts their uh, adventure as well. Uh, the story missions were, in my opinion, surprisingly enjoyable to play. The story itself wasn't anything that blew me away. I'd say that this was maybe because I didn't really give the story a proper chance. Uh, but just watching the few cutscenes that I skipped out on during my play session, just watching them back on YouTube because I missed those during playing, uh, it really doesn't seem like anything special. However, the missions themselves, when you're playing them, there are a lot of cool moments there. The environments, they look really great. And the missions actually also had memorable moments to them this time. Something that I, I never really had with the first game. A lot of the bosses are still the very same big guys in a big armor suit that can tank about 100 bullets. But the way in which they introduce those bosses, it really makes it feel like you're, you're about to take down someone important, someone scary. Uh, for example, we had this mission where at the end of it, everything just blew up and went into flames. And then when you looked at the top, uh, at some ledge, you saw this big guy walking up to you and, and screaming like, I'm going to take you down. Uh, which was really, really cool. That was really uh, almost a set-piece moment, I'd say, mid-gameplay. Or we have this room where uh, two fatties spawn in, and they both have melee weapons, and they're also really, really fast. So then you're you're all panicking, and you're just trying to kite them and running around. That was... Uh, it's a fun surprise. It, it's what made the missions uh, a lot more fun and uh, a lot less repetitive. So yeah, the story missions themselves, they're more entertaining to play, but they're also longer. They're very lengthy. Uh, and even to the point where the side missions are now the length of a storyline mission in the Division 1. So yeah, everything got stretched out a little bit without it feeling like things got stretched out. Because I really enjoyed playing every moment of it. If this game wasn't a looter shooter, if this game did not have an endgame, I could have played this as a single player game and, and felt happy with it at the end. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to be the best game ever if you're just getting a single player experience out of it. But it's not bad either. It's pretty enjoyable to play. And again, even the side missions sometimes had story to them. Uh, for example, we had this unique mission where we had to go into a building and then climb up in an elevator. And then we had to chase down this hunter, which mid-fight, he suddenly shocks everybody. He turns off the lights and he walks up to you very ominously, almost like a, a horror game, like he's about to just kill you. But then he turns around and runs away. Uh, although that's probably not the last we've seen of him. And there's also a scent of puzzle elements in there like for example we had this building where we had to turn down a painting click a secret button and then the bookshelf would move over and then from that house we would go into a secret basement to some underground cult like area i don't know it was i don't know what it was but it was really cool uh, and i think the developers did an excellent job of picking the right locations for the main and the side missions and just keeping the game interesting even though at the core of it you're Going from one place, killing a few bad guys, getting loot, and then going to another place, killing a few bad guys, and getting more loot. They put a lot of flavor to the game. Now, I did say that it took me 12 hours to finish it, but I think that for most players, that's almost going to be unreasonably fast. Uh, I think for most players, they'll probably complete the story in about 20 to 25 hours. That's reasonable. I gotta say, I did sort of rush through the campaign. I... I kind of have to, as a content creator, to try to stay ahead of everybody else, to be able to make videos on stuff that not everybody has already caught up to yet. So the, the campaign is definitely a lot longer than 12 hours for a lot of players, but definitely not the quoted 40-hour campaign that uh, many websites claimed it to be just before launch. Now, at the end of the campaign, the player is also required to beat three strongholds, which are the headquarters of each faction. 
Uh, and they're supposed to be these big, nasty missions. And I gotta say, all three of them, they're, they're really cool to play. They're basically like incursions, almost like incursions, but you can play them alone as well. So don't worry about it if you don't have a group. Uh, and the environments are just, I don't know, they're really cool. One of the strongholds was the whole of Roosevelt's Island, which just looks so different from uh, anything else in the game. You first gotta get over this bridge. And then there's just this island filled with camps and... I don't know, just strongholds, that kind of stuff. I really got the Walking Dead vibes from it almost. And it was it was just a blast to play. I wouldn't say that these strongholds were as difficult mechanically, though, as I would have hoped them to be. They're basically just like main missions in terms of difficulty. Uh, if you're the required level, if you're level 26 and the stronghold is level 26, they're fairly easy to play through. They're just longer. They just take a lot more time. You have more rooms to kill NPCs in, more places, and... Uh, there's also more NPCs per room, so it, it just goes on a little longer, but mechanically it isn't anything out of the ordinary. You know, you're still fighting the same mobs that you fought the whole campaign, but either way, so far so good, you know? Uh, whether you spent 10 or 30 hours on this campaign, I think the content's really enjoyable. No matter in what way you do it, it's, it's gonna be a fun experience for you. And no, the game is not grindy at all. I think a lot of players are gonna be afraid that it's going to be grindy going into this. Because the Division 1 kind of required you to do really petty side missions that weren't fun at all just to advance. In a Division 2, this isn't the case. I think I've done a total of maybe four or five open world side activities. The, the question marks, which are like, save the hostages or take the control point during the whole campaign. And at the end of the campaign, I still had side missions, unique side missions with unique content that I hadn't done yet. So you can easily complete the story without even touching all the petty side stuff, so don't worry about that. But yeah, after I don't know how many hours, depends how much time you want to take, you're gonna get to the end game. And at first sight, it's gonna look like a playground that opens up. We have world tiers now that uh, require you to slowly gear up and advance through the next world tier and the next world tier to slowly increase your stats and slowly build your build. And we have content on top of content to do that with, right? Right? Well, maybe, just a little bit. Uh, so here's how it works. The moment that you complete the final mission, the map is invaded with this new faction, Black Tusk. And this Black Tusk takes over all the strongholds, all the three strongholds that you just cleared, and also a whole lot of missions. They're called Invaded Strongholds and Invaded Missions now. And in order to advance to the next world tier, uh, which allows you to then get better gear, you have to complete the strongholds first. Uh, it's a great idea, but it's pretty flawed in its execution in my opinion. You see, to play one of the strongholds, you have to do two other things first. Uh, the first one is to complete the two missions that are tied to that specific stronghold. So we have three strongholds, and then each of those strongholds has two missions. So there's a total of six missions, and I guess you have to beat two of those missions to get access to one of the strongholds. And that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's just, you know, normal progression, nothing special here. But the second requirement to play that stronghold is to get your gear score up to a certain amount. Uh, and I, I initially thought that this gear score requirement was more like a recommendation, like, hey, if you replay this stronghold, the NPCs are going to be really, really dangerous, they're going to be really, really strong, and you're going to probably at least need this gear score in order to do so, pretty much a la Falcon Lost in a Division 1, where if you didn't have your gear, you were going to have a really, really difficult time. But it isn't like that at all. Instead, the, the gear score requirement is actually a hard lock, you cannot start the stronghold, even if you have one gear score too little combined, even if it is because of your pistol, because of your sidearm, which is a little bit odd, because it means that you have to replace your sort of min-maxed build that you put together while playing the campaign. Like, for example, me, I had an LMG with LMG damage on my gear, like talents that uh, sort of mixed and matched, and yeah, some items were level 27 or level 28, but I didn't care about that because all put together, my build was pretty strong. But I was now forced to replace that build with random gold pieces, and in many cases also random purple pieces that I just picked up out of that world tier, just to be able to unlock the stronghold. Which, uh, which made my character actually weaker for the strongholds than he otherwise would have been. Uh, I was forced to play with SMGs and rifles when I didn't have an SMG or rifle built. Uh, which just wasn't very efficient. Uh, so unless you want to farm your whole build again in the same world tier, you're just gonna have to play with whatever you get first, equip six good items and three good weapons, and then whatever those items are, you're gonna do the stronghold with that, which is 
I don't, I don't know if I like that. And I would have understood it. I would have understood the gear score hard lock if the Black Tusk invaded strongholds were actually difficult. But because of the gear score requirement that hard locks a player out until they have enough gear score, the content is actually pushover by the time that you are able to play it because you're gonna be at that gear score, so you're gonna do a lot of damage and be able to tank a lot of damage as well. So then the content's pretty easy. So then these big strongholds that you're using to progress through the world tiers, which are supposed to be uh, the end game content missions, I guess, they're now almost, uh, they're now some of the easiest content in the game. Easier than some of the storyline missions in my case, because I played the storyline missions when I was, I don't know, one, two or three levels down. So it's, it was a little bit of a disappointment there, I guess. It just turned the whole world tier leveling system into completing the stronghold, then going to the base, running to the closest nearby vendor, buying six gear items uh, to boost my gear score up, playing the two missions, and then rushing to the next stronghold to advance to the next world tier, and then do it all over again. Go to the vendor, buy new gear pieces, equip those, go to the missions, do the last stronghold. And that's basically the whole world tier leveling system. If you do it like this, you're done with it in about three hours. And, and worst of it all, it is by far the most efficient way to do it, and there's no reason to not do it this way. So yeah, I went from level 30 to world tier 4 in about 3 hours time, and if you don't believe me, you can check the Twitch VOD, it's still up there. But yeah, after reaching world tier 4, there are of course a lot of things to do in the open world. You can take back control points, you can kill patrols, which also come in this form of these high-tech scouting ships. Uh, the open world, there's stuff to do there, you know? There's even loot to find on every corner of the street. There's reason to play the game. But, but I gotta be honest, and because World Tier 5 is not available yet, and I know it's gonna be available in, I guess, a week from now or something, I haven't really found the incentive yet to hardcore farm for items, because I know that in about a week from now, uh, the last stronghold is gonna become available, and then from that moment on, I'll be able to go to World Tier 5, so... I don't know, all my gear will be irrelevant then as well. I, I I haven't really felt the motivation to go for all my gear yet, so I can't really comment on the endgame loop yet because I haven't really figured out what's the best thing to do and how enjoyable that best thing to do is when you do it, if that makes any sense. I, I do have a feeling that farming will come down to just doing the same thing over and over again that's slightly faster than all the other things in the game, but again, I'll, I'll keep my judgment on that for the full release. So yeah, we've had story, we've had endgame, uh, story was pretty good, but then the world tears, the idea was good, but the execution, uh, it leaves some things to be desired. So now let's talk about the technical state of the game, because in my beta video I mentioned that I disliked a couple parts of the game, I said the UI was pretty shitty, uh, some of the skills they feel clunky, uh, the game was a little bit buggy, and I, I don't know if the PvP was enough to keep me playing in the long run. Now, I won't be commenting on the PvP, because I haven't really played any of that yet, so it would be really unfair to include anything about the PvP at all. Uh, but the three out of four other items on that list, well, there's still things in the game that I, I, I take issue with. I mean, the UI, I still think it is very messy. There's double-clicking everywhere on PC, opening caches, or even donating to control points. It takes forever. Uh, some skills still take a very long time to deploy, and some of them are also very difficult to even use properly because of the bad controls. For example, the cam launcher with the keyboard and mouse. Uh, and the game also still has quite a few bugs. Now, are all the bugs bad? No, uh, absolutely not at all, you know? Uh, the bugs in this game can range from the very innocent enemy standing in a wall, or, I don't know, player standing in an untextured room under the ground, uh, or, you know, just sounds just being weird when your friend's next to a turret. Uh, just listen to this, for example. You know, just... The small things, they're, they're a little bit annoying, you're like, why does this happen? But it doesn't break the game, you know? It doesn't uh, destroy your enjoyment of playing. But then there's also the more slightly annoying ones, such as, for example, the double reload bugs, which, yes, they're still in the game. I know a lot of people said that it's because of the, 
the, the reloading, the one bullet in the chamber. But here I've got an LMG with 100 bullets. It doesn't have a bullet in the chamber. And still here I get the double reload as well. Double reload is still in the game. Here you go. And then there's also the more serious game-breaking bugs, which is stuff that, you know, happened with my character as well. Now, I won't go too much into this. I'll just explain the situation real quick. In my case, I, uh, I played the strongholds with some friends. And, and when I did those strongholds, I wasn't the session leader. Uh, and then, you know, long story short, uh, when I completed the strongholds, it counted as me completing the strongholds. But I didn't go up in real tier. So now my character is stuck in world tier 3 and I cannot ever advance to world tier 4. It has something to do with my character not having the required gear score yet when we played the strongholds, but then joining my friend who had the required gear score and then just playing it in his session. I'm not exactly sure what went wrong, but the bottom line is, is that my character is now permanently stuck in world tier 3. And if I want to advance in this moment in time, I have to create a second character, get that character to level 30, and then try the strongholds again with that character. Now I've already talked to the developers about this and I'm sure that this will be fixed very, very soon. So I'm not gonna go over this for too long. It's just something that I wanted to mention. Uh, they're probably gonna fix this, let's be honest. It's just, I'm using this example to show you that the game is undeniably still a bit buggy. It has bugs, even exploits. Um, I totally forgot about this almost. The game even has exploits that allow you for crazy loot farming such as this for example where this player can just open a chest over and over and over again and i'm gonna get purples and yellows and all the loot uh, something like this was in the closed beta it was also in the open beta and right now it's still in the game as well and, and sure people might pass all this off as, as me being depressed or burned out or whatever I, I really don't know what has gotten into the community lately with i don't know everybody just wearing pink glasses and, and pretending everything is fine I mean, the proof's on the screen right now, so, so I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, but yeah, let's not beat that buried horse again. I I guess I'll get to the question of this video. Should you buy this game? And I think that that depends on uh, on who you are. I think the game has put the groundworks there for a very good product. I, I'm not gonna lie, the game's good. The, the end game infrastructure is there, the content's there. And if you enjoy looter shooters and are in it for the long haul, then yeah, I'd say the game is worth the money. Definitely, there, there's a lot of good stuff in here. However, for everybody maybe not prepared to, to go in there for the long haul, expect to run into issues as well. Small issues and also large issues. And yeah, there are also just a lot of very small annoyances that I personally have with the game, I guess, that will uh, start to rear their ugly heads a little bit later into the game when everybody has got their shit figured out. It's, it's bugs, it's some controls, it's some UI issues, it's some economy issues. And I think that for everybody not willing to deal with that, uh, this game could very well feel like, you know, just a lot of paper cuts over and over. You're having fun, you know, you're, you're playing the game, but there's a lot of paper cuts. And, and that's what the game feels like for me right now. I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a good game. It's filled with content, but it also still needs a lot of work. Uh, and I, I think they're going to put the work in. They have a whole year one plan. And the developers have shown with the Division 1 in the past that they're they're not just gonna give up, you know? If the game has issues, they're gonna address them and they're gonna make the game better. And just based on that alone, I know that probably in a few months, most of the issues that I have right now, they're probably gonna be fixed. But I'm just saying, you know, if you're buying this at launch, expect to run into some issues. And that's all. As always, guys, I'll see you all later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.